Hello, everybody. <clears throat> I'm, um, I'm speaking to you from Modena, Italy, and uh, I prepared this webinar together with uh, Paolo Berni. Paolo Berni uh, is actually a video professional. He works Hello. on video, on films, uh, and uh, film director and uh, events director for video. And I am actually a teacher in upper secondary school in Modena, and I teach math and physics. So the idea behind this webinar is that uh, because of COVID lockdowns or um, slow down activities, many, many lab activities were totally canceled. So uh, the idea is that maybe that with video we can share ideas, we can share activity, we can perform um, labs, uh, we can um, uh, film uh, and make short documentary or videos about uh, experiments we can do, or even better, we can tell the pupils, uh, okay, go ahead and try with your smartphone to um, see if you can document your activity or your lab. So, um, the good thing is that, is that uh, uh, pupils by themselves can uh, uh, have a walk uh, on their city uh, or downtown or uh, wherever they want to go in the countryside and uh, make a short movie. And uh, basically this video is about uh, uh, something uh, really special but not that expensive that you can do with the, the movies that's uh, uh, slow motion. Uh, that's made with uh, high-speed cameras and uh, time-lapse. Actually, you can uh, do time-lapse with the uh, action cam. Action cam are not that expensive and uh, Paolo will, um, will explain you a lot of things about action cam and how you can use them. And you can get the slow motion, not only with the special high-speed cameras, but also with the smartphones or even um, uh, off-the-shelf cameras that you can find in the stores. So it's not uh, out of reach. It's not a, a world that's out of reach, this uh, uh, high-speed uh, frame rate and, uh, and um, time-lapse. So, and it's, it's really something because, because you can, um, for instance, you can give exercise to the pupil and try to see if they if they can calculate uh, the amount of memory that's needed to uh, prepare a slow motion, for instance, the storage they need, the image resolution that's allowed to make what they want to do. And you can discuss a lot of things on light, on optics, on the eye. And so uh, many, many, um, topics uh, in in physics or science can be discussed with it. So now I will uh, I am giving the stage to Paolo, and uh, he will show you um, movies that uh, he's been doing with uh, high speed cameras and and uh, slow motion and um, time lapse and hyperlapse. Okay, thank you, Marco. Uh, just, I mean, my name is Paolo Berni, I'm from Modena, and I am a freelance video director. And uh, with uh, Marco Nicolini, we have also worked together for a sample of this uh, <coughs> that I would like to show you. And first of all, I would like to remember uh, in, with a few words what uh, is uh, a time lapse that, that, that uh, are the technique used that, that in the following examples. Uh, so we are going to to take uh, maybe you already knows, but it's a technique in which uh, a photo or video camera uh, takes uh, images in sequences uh, to create time lapse, for example. And uh, so we are knowing, we are catching, for example, one one frame every half second or up to thirty seconds, and then when we put it at a normal speed, that will be 
25 frames per second, the time seems to move faster. So this is the, the, the effect that everybody knows between, you know, even remembering the, the movie Koyanis Katsi, you know, in the, in the 80s. Uh, uh, another thing, another definition that I would like to, to remind, it's the, the slow motion. Uh, yes, okay, the, 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 on the opposite side, uh, after um, the, 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 there is a slow motion where the, the same action is captured with a high number of frame per second, and then playing back uh, normally at 25 frames per second. For example, if you are shooting at 100 frames per second, the, our video will, will be four seconds long. And uh, this, uh, even the, the last model of uh, smartphones are, are um, capable to shoot in uh, up to 960 frames per second. So it will be uh, like 20 times uh, longer. This is uh, possible just for very, a very short uh, uh, time of action. For example, mm, less than one second. That will be more or less 18 seconds of playback. But in this, uh, in this uh, playback, very, uh, the, with a uh, ralenty, very, very, very nice, you will see the action, um, and uh, it's, it's very interesting. And this is possible with the latest model. But even for a few years ago, it was a smartphone that uh, that can make it possible this this shooting. So. Another thing that I would like to remind, okay, there is another kind of effect that is hyperlapse, that is defined as hyperlapse or moving time lapse. So the camera in the time lapse um, action normally is still and should be still because uh, to, to make the, the effect work, it works. But there is also this uh, kind of um, effect, it is hyperlapse. So the camera is uh, taking one frame every half second up to 30 seconds, but the camera is also moving in a, in a stable way, but moving. So this is another um, interesting effect that we will see in the example. Um, I have used the uh, camera like this one that uh, everybody knows, GoPro, the very, very, I mean, it's affordable and uh, easy to find and to use too. Or, at le or uh, the, the, uh, also the, the uh, um, smartphone that belongs uh, in, uh, three years ago, so it's not, uh, it's not brand new, but it's still capable of uh, making this, this effect that we will see. Okay, now I switch to the video section. This, for example, is one hour time lapse uh, with, with shot with GoPro. So in this case, the camera is very still on a tripod. Okay, another, this is another example. Um, I have left uh, four hours between um, sunset uh, maybe more. This will be eight hours. Eight hours time lapse, very with the appropriate uh, interval between one frame and another. And so you will see. This is a slow motion. Even if it goes fast, <laughs> it will be eight times faster in real time. This is a time lapse. So this, you see, everybody knows the, the speed of. <laughs> the real speed. This is another time lapse. So we, also, the camera that moves moving. This is not a time lapse in reality. The, it's uh, the moon is uh, <laughs> is moving by its natural speed, but seems seems a time lapse. But it's a normal video. Another kind of uh, very interesting to see the, the clouds that is moving and it's fading. Still on GoPro, this one. This is another slow motion. Uh, so this, the movement are very slow, very captured uh, 200 frames per second and play it back at 25. So it's a eight time uh, rallenty. This is a, a ferment, you know, the lievito, it's called in Italy, lievito madre. And uh, with the time lapse, you see the, the, the growth, the growth of the, 
This is this has been ca captured with the smartphone. So 960 frames per second. So you can see for a small amount of uh, action, even for the time, you see, you can uh, slowly uh, see the time. And uh, analyze uh, for your exercise or for your application. This is another time lapse that the people that is walking in on a, on a, in a room. In this case, uh, to have the the effect, the, the correct effect, the, the frame should be taken by half second, one from each other, to have the continuity. This is another example of hyperlapse. The in, in, uh, so a time lapse, but in movement. You see, so uh, could be uh, interesting from some exercise. I don't know. These are just samples. You know. This is another hyperlapse. This is on the car, you see, stable, but uh, I think this, uh, this uh, effect, this is a ralenti, but uh, the difference here is that the, the original frame rate was 25, and this has been just uh, um, in, uh, used in post-production. You see, it's more, it's, it's less fluid than the, the, the original with uh, a lot of more frame, Another time lapse, sunset. Okay, after this one, Marco, I will uh, get back to you. If you have some, need some more details about uh, the example, I have more later. Please, Marco, I get back to you. Okay. I think I can resume the presentation. Uh, I can resume the presentation starting from here. And um, so coming to the high speed cameras that are the cameras that allows, allow you to make slow motion because they actually, instead of uh, 25, 27 frame per second, uh, take more picture in any seconds. Uh, they are uh, still something that uh, at a professional level can be really expensive. But luckily, uh, there was um, uh, a very well known uh, uh, entry level camera that you could buy for uh, as few as 300 euros. That was Casio Exilim, but unfortunately, it's not in production anymore because smartphones allow you to get uh, even 1000 frames per seconds now so and uh, yeah the lucky part is that you can uh, you can uh, take uh, slow motion action with smartphones and action cam too uh, so you have onboard action cams uh, you the option uh, is that for time lapse you can do it with action cams, but unfortunately, you cannot leave your smartphone unattended somewhere for four or five, five hours. And time lapse is really useful for science teacher, for the nature observation, astronomy, animals, uh, uh, animals motion, meteorology, as Paolo uh, showed us uh, with the clouds, so with sunset, sunrise, and, and so on. Uh, when you choose a slow motion camera or a, um, when you choose a smartphone, having in mind that you would like to uh, record um, high speed uh, motion, uh, you should take care, you should uh, take into consideration the frame rate, but also the resolution you, you would like to, to get, uh, the bit depth uh, and the light sensitivity. Uh, the minimum exposure time and obviously the internal memory, that's the constraint, it's the most important constraints. And we will see why. Uh, so the fra frame rate is actually the, um, um, the count of how many frames you can get for each second. You can have uh, 1000 FPS, which means frame per second, with the uh, iPhone, with uh, many, many Android smartphones. 
And uh, unfortunately, there is a memory constraint, a storage constraint with that, <coughs> because you cannot get long videos with this. Uh, but uh, the most expensive uh, cameras that allow you as much as 20,000 frames per second at one megapixel resolution uh, have a lot of memory, but unfortunately, they are really expensive. Uh, yeah, the higher the resolution you get, uh, the lower the maximum frame rate will be because the resolution is uh, is a measure of the details you are getting of your uh, picture of your uh, from your frame, which means that the more detail, the more memory will be used for details, and the less memory, the less storage you will have to uh, for your frame number okay so you will you want to be able to achieve the same frame rates with a higher resolution camera you raise your resolution you have to decrease your frame per second the bit depth i i don't want to discuss it it here really in depth uh, but uh, uh, there are cameras that uh, record uh, frames with 8 bit, with 10 bits, or 12 bits, even 12 bits. And uh, if you increase the number of bits, you increase the details that you get, uh, the resolution, if we could say, which means that you need more memory, you need more storage. And even with this uh, item, you won't be able to, you won't be able to get uh, high frame rates with uh, high bit depth. Yeah, light sensitivity is something that um, uh, decides your time, your uh, exposure time. So we can skip it. We can skip the exposure time, but we have to say uh, definitely that the internal memory is the most important constraints, or better, the driver that will decide your frame rate and your uh, bit depth uh, and uh, your resolution. In fact, uh, I can show you some uh, equations. So as you can see, uh, the memory is something that comes out from a multiplication, which means that if you multiply the resolution times the frame rate uh, times the bit depth, you get give or take uh, something that's proportional to the memory, okay? So if you increase one factor and the memory is fixed, uh, you cannot change it. Unfortunately, you have to decrease the uh, one of the other, at least one of the other factors. Um, so, uh, yeah, this, uh, mm, this slide is uh, more or less what I told you. Um, speeding up slow processes with time compression is one thing that you can do um, with time lapse. And uh, what's really interesting for a math teacher is that you get another time scale. You can count now time with the frame per second being your new time unit. So it's it, since frame per second is a sort of frequency, you can uh, give uh, very interesting exercises to pupil, and they will have to convert uh, the usual seconds, minute, and hour time scale into frame per second, and that's really interesting and that's really useful. The same thing happens with uh, the other process, the other way around. You do the other way around with the. Uh, uh, time lapse. You, um, I'm sorry. The other way around uh, with um, uh, high-speed uh, cameras, you are actually slowing down quick events with time dilatation. Um, okay, so uh, the pupils with this activity can uh, really do something that. Uh, is close to the work that scientists normally do. They can inquire into nature, into something that they can touch directly, and they can use the cameras 
as a sort of microscope for time instead of space, and then can inquire something that normally wouldn't be wouldn't be visible. Okay, so now I want to um, get to some uh, a video that I prepared with some experiments that I did in the last years uh, at school. So these are school experiment, more or less. Number one is referring to uh, the water rockets. I guess you are very familiar with water rockets. So this is not a steady camera, which means that uh, the measurement would be done with something uh, on a tripod, for instance. But as you can see, uh, the bottle is starting and we put a paper band um, to be able, a, a, a graduated a paper band to be able to measure the speed of the rockets using a program like Video Tracker. I guess you are familiar with Video Tracker. This is another example of uh, water rockets. And as you can see, if you can count the frame that you are, uh, that it takes to the rocket to get from uh, one uh, meter to the other, you can uh, get a sort of speed. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I repeated this, but it's, it's short. It's not taking a lot of time, so we can have a look at it another time. And you can count frame and the number of frame and the, the, the space between uh, one band and the other uh, will be used to get the speed. And you can perform calculation about speeds, for instance. Um, you can... Uh, sort of estimate the, the kinetic uh, energy at, at the starting point. And you can see if energy is uh, conserved, which actually is not. Uh, this, is another, um, this is another hit for pupils. And this is the so-called Coca and Mentos experiment. Uh, I just want to show you that you have to be Re you have to run really fast in order to preserve your clothes from being hit by the coca jet. And actually is something very interesting. This was recorded using a smartphone. So you see that the smartphone can give uh, you um, a, fair, a fair impression, a fair recording of uh, something like that. Uh, now let's move on and see something else. Just waiting for this, this video to reach its ending point. Uh, number five, okay, number five is do you remember the, the old television set, cathodic television set? They had a frame rate, a uh, frame refresh rate of 25, 26, 27 frame per second. And now if you record a short video on them um, and, and you use a, a higher frame rate, you can uh, get uh, this uh, flickering and actually, the previous video was recorded as at 256 frames per second. And this is even better because it was recorded at 1024 to, to the power of 10 frames per second, which gives you the impression that the flickering is really something. You can even discuss the, the image uh, and the retina behavior with this. You see, this is uh, the desktop of, um, of an old personal computer. You can see the flickering even here. Uh, you can see the flickering on a Google uh, web page is, is really evident. And all these experiments were done at school, so you can repeat them at school or can be done at home 
without any risk of danger. So this, uh, I, I, I don't know uh, whether you are able to see the light intensity growing and uh, decreasing in time. Uh, this is a recording of the uh, a light bulb. And if you can see the light increasing and the light intensity increasing and decreasing is the 50 Hertz, the grid 50 Hertz. Okay. So this is interesting because if you teach the alternate current, they can get a rough idea on why they are not seeing it, but uh, why can they actually um, be able to see this detail? This is not visible with direct current. This is a torch and obviously it's, um, it's powered by batteries. So there is no alternate current. There is a direct current and you can show them the difference between alternate current and the visual difference between alternate and direct current. After that, oh, we have, this is uh, a video. The, the idea was Paolo's idea. This is tortellini. Tortellini are um, pasta that's uh, very well known here in Modena. It's produced here, here in Modena in our region. So this is like a, a advertising spot for Modena. But as you could see, the tortellini uh, went down in the soup with a, and they were recorded in slow motion. This is a simple experiment of dropping a ball uh, between and, and to measure the distance and to measure again the time in unit using as unit the frame rate. Yeah, I'm sorry. The, as you can see, the resolution is not optimal now, but you uh, must take into consideration that probably this was recorded like seven, eight, nine years ago. Uh, so uh, the resolution at the time wasn't the resolution that's possible now. Okay, there is a little bit of math here. Uh, I uh, recorded this with a colleague of math. You can get a sort of conic graph with this. You are, we are just dropping uh, objects that were aligned, previously aligned. And what you get while the, the bar is going down is a conic. It's a very well-known conic, but then this is math. And this is very easy to be, to be done in the lab, but they can organize this at, at home as well. Um, uh, we had, we made recently a trip uh, visiting a mill and this is uh, where the flour is taken and um, is produced and taken somewhere else, maybe stored. And they can observe here uh, if the flour is actually uh getting the the good velocity the good speed to reach the storage and uh, they are also centrifuging it um to get the separation between the good uh, part and the bad part so here it's uh, another part of the trip of the flower and um, a pupil of mine uh, had the idea to take a slow motion video and we got this and we could see how the flower parts are centrifuged and what they are centrifuged for. I guess that we are give or take at the end of the first video. Uh, I now want to show you uh, more professional videos. OK, this is a part of the same machine. So as you can see, uh, it's low down thanks to the high speed. And now we are at the end of video one. Now we can take video two. So from video two, you will have a more professional experience, um, impression. Because in video two, we have uh, 
we have uh, movies that were um, offered by Fotron. Fotron uh, is a company that uh, showed uh, us, I mean, they, they came at my school and they showed us what uh, can be done with the high-speed cameras. And this is, for instance, uh, the internal part of a washing machine where the water is um, pushed out. And again, we have, just to give you some ideas, this is a, a wine glass broken by sound waves. You can read it on the leftmost part of the upper leftmost part of the, of the video. This is a rubber ball, a frozen rubber ball. I can't even think of how they come out with these ideas. A frozen rubber ball. And yeah, it's good uh, recording impacts, for instance, to get the, the idea of the pulse. That is a combustion, a combustion camera, of, I think, of um, Daimler Benz. And after that, we have we have uh, okay an impact Formula One car impact, and this gives you a rough idea of the material that are used to uh, to take energy out of the car to preserve the pilot as much as they can from uh, absorbing the energy. And this is what happens to the pilot when getting an impact somewhere, a strong impact, which is why they want to take, uh, to subtract energy, as much energy as they can with the materials. Oh, this is a very famous, you can find it on YouTube. And uh, this is the uh, water bowl experiment. And what, what really impresses me is that with the higher frame, high frame rate, frame rate, you can see how actually the the water stays there a little bit. Um, it's like the water didn't got the message of the gravity to be pulled up, pulled down. Okay, for a fraction of sec of seconds. And then after this fraction of seconds, the water starts falling. You see, so this is really interesting. The shape of the balloon stays there, even though the, the balloon is gone. This is really something, I think, for a physics teacher. And then again, <clears throat> Uh, I have to say that this movie was provided by uh, Professor Fulmer. Actually, Professor Fulmer uh, is the person that most inspired me during Science, uh, Science on Stage uh, Festival 2011 in Copenhagen. He came in Copenhagen and uh, offered a, a show with uh, high-speed cameras and high-speed uh, uh, experiments. And he provided me with some uh, short videos that I will show you after that. And this is a moldy machine, okay? And they can, I know that they can um, examine details to see what's happening at, if something is not working well. So the age of this video can be uh, guessed uh, if you see the, the smartphone that were used uh, for this experiment. So now we are at the end of video number two. We should get to video number three. That's this one. Video number three. And I hope that we have something that can be interesting for science teacher. Okay, here we have again the um, water balloon offered by Fotron. And yeah, this, the, 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 the consideration I have to tell you are the same. This is a broken uh, beer bottle and how it uh, breaks. And then we have again, okay, a water drop. 
but as you can see, uh, the frame per seconds are 2000, which means that which means that you cannot get this effect on a smartphone cameras. But just to give you an idea, I hope that sooner or later all of us will be able to buy a camera that allows us at least to get 2000 frames per second. I guess that this is within reach in the next few years. And I guess I hope that I, we gave you some clue on uh, what to do with um, a high time resolution. Uh, while uh, we are uh, watching and this, this is a gas lighter and uh, whenever uh, we examine details of fire and fire events, it's really interesting to see how fire develops and how dangerous it is and how quick it is to, to uh, develop itself. And why I was telling you while uh, we are uh, watching these short videos, I would like to uh, stress how inspiring was to me the Science on Stage Festival events. And this was back in 2011. And how I was inspired by the professor Fulmer and uh, another professor of Dresden University, the University of Dresden, sorry, because they really uh, opened my mind and gave me, uh, gave me clues and hints of, on something that I really didn't know of. Uh, okay, this is sport and you can obviously uh, invite pupils to uh, record very interesting details on their sport activities, like how they hit the football go ball, the volleyball, basketball, basketball trajectories, for instance. Okay, this is a inkjet printer droplet formation, and as you can see, it's twenty five thousand frames per second. This is 3,800 frames per second with a fair image resolution. Obviously, when a good frame resolution is not needed, there is no meaning on uh, using it. So you can increase the frame rate. Okay. And now to end the, the movies, I would like to offer you this uh, tribute to Professor Fulmer, uh, back then, back in Copenhagen, he uh, gave me the uh, these short videos. Uh, I think he and his colleague were pioneers in high-speed camera um, experiments. I think that uh, this man is um, this guy is Professor Fulmer. And as you can see, um, uh, the frame count and the time that are the first two um, numbers that you can observe at the upper leftmost part of the video uh, are telling you that we are going at 1000 frames per second because the milliseconds count is the same as the frame count which means that you can get this even from a smartphone that your pupils have at school or have at home and can, you, they can provide the lab with the stuff like that. At the time, we were nine years ago and I think that getting 1000 frames per second was really expensive. This is a spaghetti, for instance, and how it breaks. Uh, the frame rate is 4000, as you can tell from the time count and the frame count. And uh, okay, and this is again Professor Fulmer product. So we credit him. This is a tennis ball, is really interesting to see uh, the duration, the impact duration. Okay, if you teach the um, 
uh, impulse force times uh, time is really useful to measure the impact time and normally the impact time is something that's not easily measurable or easily distinguishable and again we have the okay the explosion the ball explosion and i am afraid that we are done now uh, so this is more or less our proposals again the idea is that uh, uh, the idea is that um, in lockdown in lockdown uh, time you cannot uh, you cannot schedule properly uh, lab event and lab activities so maybe you can tell your pupils okay you go ahead you make a short movie of um, i don't know of uh, snails walking and you take your action cam there for a couple of hours and then we will examine the snails moving and the characteristic of the motion and uh, the lab is is done at home can be done at home and can be offered thanks to the internet to the whole class so in hard covid times this could be a wonderful activity and a wonderful and shareable activity for all